Hey everybody, um, today I just wanted to do a quick video talking a little bit about the waveform data type in LabVIEW. So we've been doing some videos on DACMX um, and most of these videos I've just been demoing using when I, let's say I'm reading data um, and I'm reading chunks of data, I've been pretty much doing the 1D DBL, which basically returns this array of floating point numbers. Um, and that's an option, um, there is another option as well and I just want to walk through what that is, what that looks like, and how you can work with it. Um, so if you go to analog, let's say I have a single channel and multiple samples, I can also select waveform. So now you get this um, wire that obviously looks a little different. This is the waveform data type which is a unique data type to LabVIEW. Uh, that combines the raw measurement data we were getting with the 1D DBL um, with some other information. So I actually have a constant here, and you can see that this is a waveform data type, but what it really is is a cluster. So what you have is a timestamp. So you can see here I have my timestamp. Um, we also have um, this uh, double right here, which is actually a DT. So it's an amount of time between samples. So we say, hey, this is what time our acquisition started at. Um, this is the amount of time between samples. And here is our raw data. So it's, you know, again, a 1D array. So we have this data that is this amount of time apart and it started at this time. We also have this variant which is used to store attributes and whatnot. Not super commonly used, but it can be. Um, so um, if we get a waveform out, um, the waveform data type is still compatible with things like graphs and charts. So I can just take a waveform and I can just wire it straight in. I don't need to do any fancy conversion. I don't need to be, be able to extract this data. Um, I can just write that right into a graph um, and or a chart. And my chart knows now through the waveform when my DT, when my start time was and what my DT is. So it can actually, if I wanted to, and if you noticed, it automatically switched my x-axis to show time. So now I can actually plot things um, basically versus time. So pretty cool. Um, and there is, if you open your palettes, there's actually a whole waveform section right here. Um, now there's a lot of functions and most of them I've actually never used, but there's certain ones that I find the most useful that I use quite a bit. So first off, there is this get waveform components. So this works very similar to your bundle, unbundle type idea with clusters. And again, remember this, is a cluster. If you notice, this little pink box is a cluster. So it's just a very specific cluster, similar to how errors are just clusters. But when they're defined in a certain way, um, it changes the color of the wires and everything. So um, yeah, so here I can basically extract the components. So um, I have my Y, which is the raw data, um, if I wanted just the raw data. Um, I have my T0, which is that timestamp of when this waveform started. I have my DT, which is the amount of time between samples in my Y. And I've got this attributes. Um, and the attributes, um, if you're curious, that's just through these uh, set attribute um, functions. So I can just connect this to any waveform. And basically, I specify a name for the attribute and a value. Um, and then I can go extract those either through this or I can use the get attribute function for that. So um, so yeah, that's how I can, if I need to go extract specific things, um, I can basically use this get waveform components to break it apart and to act on specific pieces of that. Um, also, if I want to go in the opposite direction, there is this build waveform function which works in the opposite direction. So I can specify um, things like my Y, my T0, and my DT, and I can output a waveform. So if I have raw data that I want to turn into a waveform, I can do this, um, whereas this allows me to take a waveform and break it into raw data. Um, 
So yeah, um, there are a whole bunch of other functions in here. So there are conversions between analog and digital waveforms. Um, I've never really had a need to use those, but they are there. Um, the most common ones I use a lot are going to be this get time array, which is really useful. I can drop this down and connect my waveform. And what I get out of it is an array of timestamps. So um, rather than having just a start time and a time between samples, this will actually give me an array of timestamps that represent every individual Y value in this array. So can be really useful for if I want to timestamp every single data point rather than just tracking the DT and the start time. Um, so I use that one. Um, there is also this get XY pair. So um, this way I can get, um, basically correlate my X's and my Y's. Um, I can specify the Y position that I'm interested in and basically output that Y position with its X value, which can be useful. Um, there is this get waveform subset that I use some, sometimes, really not all that often. But if I have a big waveform and I only want a portion of that, I can specify what, basically, whether that be a certain amount of time or samples um, and how much of that waveform I want. So maybe we've been acquiring data for a very long time and I'm reading that back from a file and I only am really interested in a small piece of that, then this is a great way to break that apart. Um, you can use, uh, yeah, the uh, index waveform array is another one I've used a decent amount, which basically works like um, the index array function just instead on an array of waveforms. Um, but yeah, there's actually a lot more in here. Like I said, I just don't use a lot of these functions all that often. So the main things to be aware of, I think, are the get waveform components, build waveform, um, and then I use these two a decent amount and this one. Um, there actually are a whole ton more functions as well down here um, for things like um, performing measurements and calculations on analog waveforms. So your max and min, right? Um, you know, you, you can't just use your array max and min on a waveform. Um, I mean, you could break out the, you could use the get waveform components and use that on your Y and that does work fine. Or you can just use this directly and get that value. Um, and there's stuff for generating signals. Uh, these I use a decent amount when I'm just simulating stuff and testing things. Um, for taking measurements on waveforms, there's a whole bunch of functions um, <clears throat> for doing you know, FFTs, for measuring amplitudes, stuff like that. So a whole bunch of functions for measuring waveforms that these I do use a decent amount. Um, and then there's also this digital waveform, which I use very rarely um, for working with digital waveforms. Um, so, you know, generating digital waveform patterns and, um, you know, stuff like that. I really don't use these all that much, but they exist as well. Um, the only difference between a digital waveform and an analog waveform is this has an array of floating points and instead you're going to have just true false booleans as your data. Um, and yeah, there's also a waveform file function, so you can actually take a waveform and write it straight to like a waveform file or export that to like a spreadsheet. So yeah, that's basically what waveforms are, is it's just a slightly enhanced version of a 1D array of raw data that includes this extra little bit of information like that initial timestamp and the DT. Um, so if you see these brown wires, it's not something that you have to be confused about or think that it is something overly complicated. Um, there are a few things you just need to be aware of if you need to do work to work with these. Um, but yeah, as, lo as long as you know how to break things apart and build things, um, it really doesn't matter. You can make just about anything work. Um, so yeah, that is gonna be uh, waveforms in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.